What the fuck is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Noah Hills. You can catch me on Twitter at No More Parties. And today's video is a look into one of the biggest fantasy disappointments of last season and a guy who I think is one of the biggest bounce back candidates going into the 2022 season, Naeem Hines. Let's get into it. Uh, so last season, Naeem Hines, uh, despite playing a full season and getting an extra game because of the move from 16 to 17 games, Naeem Hines lost 276 yards and four touchdowns from his 2020 stat line and dropped from an RB15 finish in PPR to an RB49 finish in PPR. And I am here to tell you that the culprit for Naeem Hines and his major dip in production was... Carson Wentz just sucking at playing quarterback, which caused Hines to lose relevance in the offense and caused the offense overall to diverge from how it was meant to operate in Indianapolis. And part of that can be illustrated in the early down pass rate for the Colts last season. So runningbacksdontmatter.com or rbsdm.com um, has these like advanced play calling metrics and on early downs, like first and second down, when win probability for either team did not exceed like 80%. And so in, in like early down and neutral game script situations. So basically when the playbook is like wide open, you can do whatever you want. You're not, you're not trailing, so you need to pass. You're not winning, so you should just run. And it's early downs. You can do whatever you want. So in those situations, this Frank Reich-led offense... With the Colts in 2021, with Carson Wentz at the helm, ranked 23rd in early down pass rate in those situations. 23rd in the league. The year before that, with Phillip Rivers at quarterback, they ranked 14th in that metric. So just above league, league average. And yet there was, you know, in 2020, uh, that was Jonathan Taylor's rookie year. It took him a little bit to like get going and for him to like establish himself as like a stud two down runner in that offense. And so even if we just look at like post Jonathan Taylor breakout from week 13 to week 17 in 2020, the Colts were still 17th in the league in early down pass rate. The year before that in 2019 with Jacoby Brissett at quarterback, they were 30th. So they were one of the lowest passing teams in the league in neutral game script situations. And back in 2018 with Andrew Luck, they were fifth in the league in early down pass rate. So with Rivers, right around league average. With Luck, one of the past heaviest teams in the league. With Bursette, hardly ever throwing the ball. With Wentz, towards the bottom of the league again. I think the Colts prefer balance on offense, but having like a functional quarterback is imperative to fulfilling that that offensive philosophy to that like that play calling goal. You have to have a quarterback that can operate functionally when you choose to throw the ball in order to call a lot of pass plays. And last season, they just didn't have that. Carson Wentz was not very good. And let's look at how that affected Naeem Hines. Let's look at his his career stats in a couple of different receiving metrics. If we look at Naeem Hines' route participation rate, going back to his time as a rookie in 2018, the league average for this stat for running backs is 34%. So the average running back who's, I mean, excluding guys who just like don't play, but the average running back participates in 34% of his team's passing game snaps, like like receiving or, or passing plays. 34%, so just a third of them. Naeem Hines, as a rookie, participated in 48% of Colts passing plays, then 40%, then 43%. Last year, 36.5%. So almost right at league average last year, after he was significantly above league average for his first three seasons. Let's look at his slot rate. We want our running backs to be like moved around the formation, used dynamically, especially guys who are able to like make things happen when they are used dynamically. And Naeem Hines is one of those guys. We know him to be one of the most talented pass catching backs in the league. And so dynamic usage is a good thing for him. The league average slot rate for running backs. So that would describe their, the percentage of the routes they run that they take from the slot. The league wide average for that is 8%. Going back to his time as a rookie in 2018, 12% then 13%, then 10%. Last year, 24% of Naeem Hines' passing game snaps were taken out of the slot. 24% of his routes run were in the slot. So way higher than league average, way higher, almost twice as high as any of his previous seasons. So that was a good thing. He was he was being used a lot more dynamically as, as a receiver last season, but he was on the field a lot less. And if you look at his his targets per route run in the slot, so of, of the, the routes that he's running in the slot, how frequently is he targeted on those plays? The league-wide average for running backs is 20%. They're targeted on a fifth of the routes that they run out of the slot. Going back to his rookie season in 2018, Naeem Hines was targeted at a 47% rate in the slot. That's more than twice as often as league average, and almost half of his routes in the slot 
he was targeted. The next season, 48%, even better. The season after that, 2020, 50%, targeted on half of his snaps that he took in the slot. Last season, 32.6% targets per route run in the slot. Still above league average, but way lower than his career rates. And then if you look at adjusted for like the the routes that he's running, I've developed a metric I, I talked about in a, in a couple of videos before, route adjusted target earnings, which basically describes your, your targets per route run rate relative to the routes that you're running. And so like if Naeem Hines was lining up out wide against corners and running like fly routes every play, his targets per route run is going to be low, but maybe he's being targeted often on those plays relative to how often other players are targeted on fly routes. And so it normalizes things for the routes that a guy is running. The way that the metric is kind of communicated is in a is in a percent um, relative to 100%. So 100% would be you're being targeted exactly at league average given the routes that you're running. Below 100% would be you're targeted below league, league average given the routes that you're running. Above 100% is you're being targeted above league average relative to the routes that you're running. As a rookie in 2018, his total rate number was 114%, then 124%, then 124%, and then last season, 118%. So the lowest number since he was a rookie, still, you know, significantly better than league average, but the lowest rate he had seen since he was a rookie. Part of that, I think, part of each of those things is Carson Wentz. Um, th there's the element of Jonathan Taylor was just on the field more. And so Naeem Hines, his route participation was down. Um, but even when he was on the field, he was targeted less than he has been in the last couple of years, especially out of the slot. And if we look at the, the quarterbacks that he's played with throughout his career, Andrew Luck, Jacoby Brissett, Phillip Rivers, Carson Wentz, four different quarterbacks in four different years. How often do those guys target running backs relative to league average, given the routes that their running backs are running? So essentially like the, the rate metric that I was using for Naeem Hines applied to the quarterbacks distributing the ball. Andrew Luck targets running backs, or or did at least, at a 112% rate. So 12% higher than league average. Jacoby Brissett targeted running backs at a 93% rate. So 7% less than league average. Philip Rivers targeted running backs at a 127% rate, much higher than league average. And Carson Wentz targets running backs at a 91.5% rate, what is that? Eight and a half percent less than league average. That's that's almost not at all. That's that's very very low. And if you just look at Carson Wentz, of twenty running backs that he's played with in his career who had at least ten targets in a given season, so guys who like see the field and are reasonably involved in the passing game, Carson Wentz has targeted only four of them at an above average rate in his entire career. Only four times has he targeted a running back above league average rate. Naeem Hines in 2021 is one of those guys. And then Boston Scott in 2019, Darren Sproles in 2018, and Wendell Smallwood in 2016. The other 16 dudes were all targeted at a below league average rate. So, and, and that's, that's primarily, you know, Carson Wentz played most of his career with Philadelphia. And they, you know, historically have had just like a ton of receiving running backs like Boston Scott, uh, they try to use Miles Sanders that way. Wendell, uh, Wendell Smallwood, uh, Darren Sproles. That's like multiple seasons which, with each of these running backs. And of 20 guys, he's only targeted four of them at an above league average rate. One of those guys was Naeem Hines. And then for Jacoby Brissett, throughout his career, Naeem Hines was the only running back that he ever played with that he targeted at above a league average rate. And so now, you know, Naeem Hines has been a, a productive pass catcher playing with, you know, three different quarterbacks last year, a down year with Carson Wentz, who traditionally doesn't target running backs. And now he has Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan's career rate number is 99.5%, which is obviously less than 100%, less than league average, but just barely. Like, he's he's right there. I only have, like, routes run and, and, and these numbers for post-2015, so 2016 and on. So if you look at that, the guys who Matt Ryan has targeted at above a league average rate for running backs are... Cordero Patterson in 2021, Devontae Freeman in 2019, Ito Smith in 2019, Ito Smith in 2018, Tevin Coleman in 2016, and Devontae Freeman in 2016. All those guys are talented pass catchers. Like, you look at each one of those guys, what archetype of running back they are. Like, Cordero Patterson entered the league as a wide receiver. Devontae Freeman has traditionally been a pass catcher. He was at Florida State. Uh, Tevin Coleman, similar. Ito Smith, satellite back, like all those guys are pass catching backs. The only running backs that Matt Ryan played with 
since 2016, who he never targeted at an above average rate, are Mike Davis last season, Todd Gurley, and Brian Hill. Todd Gurley was completely washed. Brian Hill's not good. Mike Davis isn't good. Matt Ryan is targeting running backs who deserve to be targeted at a high rate. He's targeting those guys at a high rate. The only running backs that he's not targeting at a high rate are the running backs who aren't good receiving backs. And so he's not the check down addict that like Philip Rivers was, but he's shown a willingness to involve running backs in the passing game if those guys are quality receivers, we know Naeem Hines is a quality receiver. Another element of this, of my, you know, kind of enthusiasm for Naeem Hines going into this season is some of the things that have been said about this offense, about Matt Ryan um, in Indianapolis this year. Naeem Hines um, was interviewed during OTAs and said, this is a quote, every year it's all dependent on what the quarterback likes, his accuracy. Matt is checking all the boxes. It's been like playing with Andrew or Phillip. And if you remember... Andrew Luck and Phillip Rivers are the two guys who targeted Naeem Hines, who targeted running backs in this offense at an above league average rate. That's a good thing. Naeem Hines went on to say, quote, Matt Ryan is not missing the layups, which may be a veiled shot at Carson Wentz. If you look at Naeem Hines' catch rate throughout his career, 2018, it was 78%. The next year, 76%. The year with Phillip Rivers, 83%. Last year, 70%. So a huge dip in catch rate from where he's traditionally been. And that wasn't because Naeem Hines forgot how to catch the ball last year. If you look at the, the rate of targets that he saw that were catchable. So if somebody throws in the dirt, we're not counting it. If somebody sails it over his head, we're not counting it. Just the percentage of Naeem Hines' targets that, that have been catchable in each season. As a rookie, 83% in 2019, 88% in 2020, 92% last year, 81%. So the lowest since he was a rookie, barely an 80% catchable target rate. And if you look at his true catch rate, so if we just look at the percentage of passes that he's catching among the ones that were catchable, his true catch rate last season was 87%, which is right in line with his numbers from the previous three years. 90%, 86%, 94%. He was right there. He didn't forget how to catch the ball. Carson Wentz was just wasn't throwing him catchable passes. And so the fact that like he had even 5.4 yards per target, which is right at where he was as a rookie. And in 2019, the fact that he even had 5.4 yards per target last year says a lot about Naeem Hines' ability to make things happen with the ball in his hands. And as a receiver, in spite of playing with a guy who just couldn't get him the ball in Carson Wentz, his, his yards per reception last year of 7.8 was his career high. Naeem Hines didn't forget how to play. He was playing with a shitty quarterback. Frank Reich this offseason has also said some interesting things about Naeem Hines and about this offense. There's the one that like people are, are focusing on where, where Frank Reich said, I quote, if I was a fantasy owner, if I was going to be in a fantasy league, I think I'd pick Naeem this year. That's a good sign. People, people, you know, connect with that. Like, oh man, we, we got to take Naeem Hines or they look at it like, okay, it's just coach speak. Like everybody says this about their players. How, wherever you fall on that issue, like th that's one thing that, that Frank Reich, you know, specifically referred to, to Naeem Hines as a good pick in fantasy. But I think there's some other quotes here that are a little bit more telling about the ways in which like he actually plans to run this offense and specifically use Naeem Hines in it. Frank Reich also said, I think last year, as we've documented well, we probably got a tad more run centric than we wanted to be than I wanted to be. So Frank Reich knows that like this, this, this early down pass rate, that, that was a severe drop back from where they were with Phillip Rivers, from where they were with Andrew Luck. Like, yeah, they have Jonathan Taylor now, and running a little bit more than when they had Andrew Luck is probably a good idea, but he knows that they, they got away from their game plan. He's acknowledging that. He also said, I quote, it's incumbent upon us to spread the ball around, number one, but also, hey, would we like to have Naeem up there as far as at the end of the season when you tally up who has the catches? Do we want Naeem to be kind of one of the top three guys? Probably, yeah. So he wants to throw the ball more this year, and he wants to get Naeem Hines more involved than he was last season. He knows last year they got away from their game plan, and he knows last year he didn't use Naeem Hines as much as he would like to, because Naeem Hines is a good player who didn't play much last season. Kind of the bottom line for me here is that Naeem Hines is currently being drafted in the 11th round as the RB43. His points per game finishes in PPR leagues since he was a rookie, RB27, RB41 with Jacoby Brissett, RB15 in 2020 with Phillip Rivers, and RB49 last year. We're not drafting 2021 Naeem Hines here. We've seen Frank Reich acknowledge that they, they ran the ball more often last year than he would have liked. We've seen him acknowledge that he'd like to get Naeem Hines involved in the pass game more. And we've seen Naeem Hines say that playing with Matt Ryan is more like playing with Andrew Luck and Phillip Rivers. So this is going to be a, a more pass-heavy offense. Naeem Hines is going to be involved more. 
Matt Ryan is going to target running backs more than Carson Wentz did. I see a potential for career high numbers in receiving for Naeem Hines and a potential RB2 finish. He's one of the best picks in the in the later rounds for zero RB teams, for hero RB teams who just need a guy to like plug and play. I don't think there's like a league winning upside here. He's not going to step in and be like the RB1 if Jonathan Taylor goes down. But for solid production, you can get very late in your draft. Naeem Hines is one of the best picks in 2022.